All right, we are back. What have we done in the previous episode? So we removed the initializer referencing the result from the results presenter and... We moved the code to the yeah. client. Yeah. Now we need to do the same with the factory, the client. Right, yeah. I think we can follow the same process. Let's define the types we need, answers. Mm -hmm. It's an array of tuples. Yeah. And we keep the same type signature and answers is array of string. So now we would like to migrate these correct answers to answers. Right. Can we do it as we did before? I think we can. Yeah. Yeah, and then we can move this logic one level above. Exactly, one level higher. This is correct answers now? Yes. And we move the mapping in here. Yeah. Uh oh Okay, the bang. Got us. What if we make this be a lazy property then? Okay. Actually, a closure, just for now. Right. So this only runs when it's required. Yeah, only when it's called. Yes. Uh, that, that, that should work. Let's see. Yes, it works. I think that's it for now. But now we should create our new APIs. Mm -hmm. You need with. Do we need the questions? The questions is just here to dictate the order. Right. But if we get the correct answers here now. Yeah, we get everything. The questions ordered. Okay, so we don't need the questions anymore, but we need options. Yeah. And the correct answers is answers. Make sense? Yes. And here we can map the questions from the correct answers. And we get just the question. Yeah, that should do it. Now the self.options should still be options. Mm -hmm. And self.correct answers should be a closure. Correct answers for now. Yeah, that's it. And then when we migrate everything, we can get rid of this closure. Yeah. Okay, so remove the iOS view controller factory deprecated initializer and make correct answers be just data. Beautiful. Okay, let's commit this. So we just introduced the new APIs. Yeah. Introduced the new factory initializer. Fantastic. Now we can update the factory tests. Let's start doing that. Okay, so here is the test. First of all, we have a make SUT. That's good. So perhaps we can overload this function. Create a new one. Yeah. Okay not to break the tests, but this now is an array of tuples. Now we can create this with the new API. Options, options, correct answers, correct answers. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's migrate the make results. Mm -hmm. So instead of dictionaries, array of tuples. Yeah. User answers, correct answers. And we don't need questions anymore, do we? Uh, no, they're included in the user and correct answers. We don't need a result, but we have a score of two. And what is the new API? User answers, we have that. Correct answers, we have that. And the scorer, since we have that hard coded too, let's keep that just so we don't break the tests. That should do it nicely, so we don't need the result. Great. We can break this down now. More readable. Run the tests. Oh, we still need a result here. Oh, okay, yeah. So let's see the diff there. Well, apparently we cannot get rid of the result yet. Yet, that's the keyword. Okay, let's put it back. Yeah. So I'm going to say result.score here. I like that. Single source of truth. Cool. And we need to remove that at some point. Right. Let's see if the test pass. Okay, okay the test green. is passing. So we can get rid of this. Yeah. Okay. Let's commit here. So this is the first step to migrate the tests. Right. 
So we updated the test factory method to use the new results presenter initializer. Yes. Almost there. Now, what we need to do is to have a new API here that accepts an array of tuples rather than a result. Yeah, exactly. So let's have a look at the factory again. So we need an API answers instead of result. Yeah. And that would be answers. Yeah. Okay, so this is the API we want. So let's first write the test. We want to call result view controller for user answers. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah. And then we can get rid of the result. Yes. Okay, now we have a compiler error because this method does not exist. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to copy this implementation for now. And if it passes, we can start deprecating that thing. Excellent. We don't need the mapping. We don't need this mapping anymore. Mm -hmm. The only problem now is the score. Just pass zero for now and see what happens. Right. Let's see if this test pass. Hmm, doesn't. Which test failed? The summary does not work. What's the message? Right, we are giving zero. So this is the integration test. That's good. Yeah. It should tell us there's something wrong. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. So one way to test this, we can pass the basic score here. Yeah. Let's see if it fails. And I want to see a failing test. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was expecting two of two, but it was zero of two. Now we can put this in the iOS factory. Basic score dot score. Right. And the test should pass. Yeah. It passed. But we should ask the question, should we inject the scorer into the factory? Yeah, that's a good one. Because right now, this is an implicit dependency in the factory, right? Yes. So perhaps uh, whoever creates this factory can pass the right scoring mechanism. Do we have this need right now to inject a closure? No, no. Maybe we should stop here then. Yeah, I think we should stop here as well. Right. We still have this result here. Let's see if we can get rid of it. Let me run it again. One last warning. It passes. Okay, great. Let's commit. Perfect timing. Tomato is done. Introduce the new factory API to create result view controllers. Okay, we are getting there. So let's have a quick look at our diagram. Now the view controller factory is the one that injects the basic score into the presenter. So look at that. The presenter doesn't have a reference to the basic score. Interesting. Let's talk about it in the next episode. Absolutely. See ya. Bye, y'all. Mm -hmm.